Today is the day and I can't wait to share this with you. My new book, Aspire to Lead, is available to purchase on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. And I couldn't think of a better way than to share this episode with the great Sarah Thomas from EduMatch. A year ago, I pitched an idea to her about a book with the Aspire model to help aspiring leaders. And she thankfully said yes, that it was something, a project that she wanted to move forward with. And it has just been a joy to work with her. She's a fabulous educator and I couldn't think of a better person to have on the show to release on launch day. So I'd love for you to check out the book and here is the episode with the amazing Dr. Sarah Thomas. Welcome back, everyone, to Aspire, the Leadership Development Podcast, where we will be discussing the visions, inspirations, and experiences from top educational leaders. My name is Joshua Stamper, and you can connect with me on Twitter or on Instagram at Joshua double underscore Stamper. Welcome back, Aspire Leaders, and I am so excited to have the one and only Dr. Sarah Thomas on the Aspire Podcast. And as you know, this is a bonus episode to talk about my book. It's coming out here on September 21st, and I am so excited to have not only someone that has contributed to the book, but it also is the leader of EduMatch, the publishing company of my book, and I have so much admiration for this woman who's about to speak, and I just am so excited for this conversation. So Sarah, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Oh, thank you so much, Joshua. And definitely, I want to give that right back to you. Like you were just fantastic, phenomenal. You inspire so many people. So it's really an honor to have you in our EduMatch family. And I'm, I'm, I, I just couldn't be more honored than to have you as part of our family. Thank you. I don't know how we want to even have this conversation because I feel like you've got a little bit more insight on the behind the scenes of the book um, in comparison to some of the other guests. But like I said, I'm just so excited to have this project out and to hold it in my hands is kind of surreal. I <laughs> I don't think it's really hit me yet that I actually wrote a book, but just the folks too that I was able to bring into that process, it was I was trying to be intentional about folks who had an impact on my leadership journey and and you were definitely one of those folks and one, I don't know, like when I brought this to you as far as a project, I mean, was it a cockamamie idea or like what were some of the thoughts going through your head of like what this book might turn into? Oh, no, I was super geeked. Like when you when you brought that idea to me, then I was I was just so geeked because I've seen everything that you've done in the educational community. You know, just like I've been a long time listener to the podcast, part of your Voxer group. And I was just like, oh, my goodness. Yes, let's do this. Let's collaborate. You know, let's make this happen. And, you know, I'm so excited the way that it turned out. It's, it's just phenomenal. You are phenomenal. So, so I, I just, I'm, I'm just super excited about all of this. So Sarah, I know you've been on the podcast before. And in fact, I don't even know if you realize this, but your podcast episode is one of the top 10 Aspire podcasts. Really? Well, yes. thank you. Yeah. So like, as <laughs> as listeners, like people just loved your episode. It was phenomenal. So for anyone that's <laughs> listening right now, if you haven't had a chance to listen to Sarah, make sure you go back and listen to the entire episode because she's dropping some major knowledge in that episode. Sarah, for those who may not know you, obviously we talked about you being a part of EduMatch, but what other things are you doing in the educational community? Yeah. So during the day, I work with the district full time um, and I love my district. I've been there for 17 years. It's crazy to say now because I remember like day one, <laughs> but that was so long ago. Um, I've taught everything from first to 12th grade there. Um, currently, I work on a district technology leadership team. So um, we work together to support our, our humongous district. We have like 209 schools. So <laughs> you know, we work together to support that. And then some semesters, I also adjunct at a local university and teaching a master's of ed tech program. And obviously, EduMatch is the baby. So I'm just, you know, <laughs> I've just watched it grow over these last, uh, I don't even know, ooh, almost seven years now. So yeah, so it's been it's been a ride. It's been a great ride so far. Yeah, and EduMatch has grown so much. I mean, as far as the authors and, and to see that community, not only like a publishing company, but you also are connecting other educators and, and doing so many other things. So what is EduMatch beyond just being a, a company that produces books? Yeah, totally. And it's funny because we didn't start out producing books. That was never like 
on the roadmap. There was never a roadmap. So I should <laughs> just skirt back that up. There was never a roadmap. It was just kind of like, let's see what happens. Started out just connecting people on Twitter, you know, just making introductions, had a form. And, you know, whenever people would get um, other people who match their interest and, you know, I would tweet out about them. And then from there, as people got connected and then they started coming to me with suggestions like, oh, let's have a Voxer group. And I was just like, cool. So we started the Voxer group. We started doing podcasts together, Twitter chats, um, ed camps, things of that nature. And then from the Voxer group, that's when the publishing started because one day we were talking about bucket list and what would everyone like to do one day. And people, so many people said, I want to write a book. So that started us doing collaborative books, which eventually evolved into solo books, which, you know, from that we've had offshoots for curriculum, documentaries, things like that. Um, we also have a nonprofit arm. So, you know, there, there's a lot going on. We just recently launched a PD arm and we're a recognized Google uh, for education professional development partner. So, I mean, you know, it's just, um, right now I, I, I didn't anticipate any of this at the beginning. I thought it was, yeah, I thought it was kind of like, it, it was just kind of like, let's throw a lot of spaghetti at the wall and see what's doing. So, you know. well, a lot of stuff. Yeah. I mean, the whole company as a whole and what you're doing, Sarah, is just phenomenal. I, I've always been impressed with it and just the servant heart that you have. It, it's obvious in every project that you have that you're there to create value and, and to help other folks. So thank you so much for, for all of those pieces. Thank you so much. I appreciate you saying that. That's That that really does touch me. So I, I appreciate that. So Sarah, that's a, probably a good segue, right? As far as the published company to what you wrote in the book, because I was so excited about your contribution to Aspire to Lead. And mm-hmm. you talk about blogging. And the title is The Ghost of Blogging Past. And I was talking, you know, before we even push record, we were talking about just blogging in general about, you know, for me, it wasn't really something I knew about or was interested in doing in the the past until someone asked me to do it for their website. And then starting that process, realizing, wow, this is actually beneficial to me as a leader to kind of think about things, experiences, decisions that I've done. And... I would just love to get your take about like your journey. Like why is blogging important for any leader? Yeah, totally. So I really love about blogging, the fact that it is public or as public as you want it to be, you know, because you can, depending on what platform you use and, you know, your privacy settings and you can, you can make your circle very small or you can expand it to the whole world. And I feel like through other people's blogs and I've gotten so many ideas of things that I could do and things I could implement. And through my own blog, then I've gotten a lot of feedback on various things I was doing and that helped me to refine it. And I know that personally, whenever I'm carrying something emotionally, then it really helps for me to write about it. And our profession is very emotionally based. You know, there's so much contingent upon emotions and and social emotional learning, you know, that's definitely, uh, people are talking more about that and rightfully so. And being aware of our own emotions and uh, being able to work through them, sometimes in a public space, you know, can be a a very, um, very freeing and fulfilling and productive experience. Yeah. So it's part of the Aspire to Reflect chapter. And I felt like that was so fitting because we go through as educators every single day with thousands of decisions that we have to make. And we don't really realize sometimes the impact of each decision, even if they're really, really small. So what are some practices that you like to do as an educational leader to help with the reflection process? So it depends on a lot of factors. Like one is the amount of time I have available, yeah. right? So um, when I blog, then I know that that tends to be a more lengthy process. So I don't do that as often as I would like to, but lately it's been coming out like microblogging. So (laughs) tweeting and and things like that and Facebook posts just to kind of get ideas out there, getting feedback, being able to reflect when not necessarily having the time. I know some people do, do solo podcasts, you know, and that's, that's a great way to also get that reflection going. There's so many different ways and a lot depends on what you want to convey, how much time you have available, and quite frankly, how much energy you can put in. So yeah, so each person's go-to will be different. Well, and I love the fact that you were talking about time, right? Because a lot of 
education leaders that that just isn't something that they have a vast amount of. And so it's okay to have little pieces, right? It, to, to tweet something out yeah, or totally. to do something, uh, maybe a five minute podcast, if, if you're willing to do something like that as far as a project. But I'm also wondering about the community piece yes. with blogging, with tweeting, with maybe using Voxer or a podcast, like for your own experience, did that build a community so that you were able to reflect with them also? Yeah, absolutely. So that's one thing that I really love about being an educator in this time, that we we do have that opportunity to have that network from multiple different places and, and multiple different stakeholders, you know, that can be part of our professional learning networks. And just the fact that we're learning and growing together, that's something that we have never been able to do at this grand scale. So I feel that now when we have that power of community, literally in the palm of our hands, then, you know, this, this is a tool that, that I'm just very, very blessed and grateful to have. This podcast is a proud member of the Teach Better Podcast Network. Better today, better tomorrow, and the podcast to get you there. You can find out more at teachbetter.com slash podcast. Now let's get back to the episode. I know Edumatch and yourself have probably a lot of things going on. So is there any projects or new ideas that are percolating within the Edumatch world that you want to share with the listeners? Oh, yes. There's always something new. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I would say that right now our um, our focus has been to kind of build upon what we already have going on, just to solidify it, make sure that, um, you know, make sure that our content, that's just like that, that fire content that we're ready to get out there, like your book, for example, we want to, you know, we're, we're definitely focusing on getting those messages out and getting them heard. And at the same time, we are building up newer aspects. Um, I know in the nonprofit branch, then pretty soon we're going to open up our mini grants that will um, be able to give some seed money to grassroots projects of educators and students. And we're also building up that PD arm. So I'm super excited about that. You know, the contributors to that platform have years and years and years of combined experience, but as an edumatch organization, then, you know, we, we're just really in the beginning stages of it. So I'm super excited about that. That's wonderful. And so if they're interested in the PD or the courses that EdgeMatch has to offer, how would they go about finding that? Yeah, so um, the best way to, to contact us for the PD would be to go to edumatchlearning.com. There's also courses at edumatchcourses.com. I feel like everything is edumatchsomething.com. <laughs> We have the books at edumatchpublishing.com. Um, the foundation is edumatchfoundation.org and edumatch is edumatch.org. And Sarah, for our listeners, if they haven't had a chance to connect with you, how can they find some of your work or connect with you on social media? Yeah, um, my social is at Sarah the Teacher, and that's S A R A H D A T E E C H U R. And I'm pretty much everywhere there. So uh, most places where I have an account, then that's, that's my handle. So I'm looking forward to connecting with folks. Oh, most definitely. And if, if anyone's listening, has it connected with Sarah, you got to do that because like she's talked about, I mean, she's got her hands and everything. So if you're, if you're looking for any type of resource, or some inspiration, make sure that you check out Sarah and, and all the wonderful things that she is doing with EduMatch. And Sarah, I am just so honored to be a part of the EduMatch family. I just can't thank you enough for allowing me to put my ideas on some paper <laughs> for folks to, uh, to read, and hopefully it resonates with some folks and helps them in their leadership journey. And I appreciate you being on the Aspire Podcast. Thank you so much. I appreciate you for having me and I appreciate everything that you do for education and educators everywhere. And uh, thank you again for being part of our EduMatch family. We're so happy to have you there. 